I did a scrappy pad. Tons of pages. I used three pages, two or three, actually. I'll do one with you. And uh, one tracing paper and one that has some pattern. And I just glued it. I used staples inside and I glued the cover. And I glued the cover on top. So I find it's a really good size. I've put enough paper that we don't feel like we're going to run out of paper quickly. And I got the idea because of the typewriter there. <laughs> that really gave me the idea to do a scrappy, scrappy notepad. So let me do one with you. I'm grabbing three pages. Yeah, I'll grab three pages of coffee stain paper. And what I'll do is, let me show you here. Like if I take this and I print it, it might be different if you print uh, on A4 paper, but just measure that. And we can see here, it's four inches and three quarter. So I'll go with papers that are four inches and a half. So this will give me some place at the left and on the right so they don't go outside. So I'm taking my three pages all together and I'll trim at four and a half, my first line. And then I'm gonna use this other size because it's eight and a half because it's a letter size paper i'm gonna do one at four and a half and the other one will be smaller which is okay because a scrappy notepad needs to be not the same size now if we look here i place them all together this one is way too long so you can either place them all together and decide which length you want. So let's I go with this, about this. I'm going to place my paper. And they don't need, they don't need to be perfectly aligned, as you see. <laughs> this will be good for another project. Okay, so let me get rid of that first. Now I have, I had three pages and I did three different pieces. So it's a nine pages which is fine. And did I grab any? Yeah, they don't have any design on those. So I'll just, I'll just mix between the, the larger one, the thinner one and the longer one. So I'll just place them and I'm not even putting them um, aligned at the top we don't care because i'm gonna do two staples and the cover the cover here will hide that so the only thing that is important is that you don't go you don't spread your paper being too large let's say if i make them really large you don't want them to be maybe larger than the top here you know you you maybe don't want that so you just want to stay like as thin as possible here. So when you place your cover, your top, you see each side is still in. So I go like that and I add some. And this is how I'm playing with my angles here to have this shabby chic effect here without a need for... Um, tearing down the paper. I just find it's, it takes a lot of time to tear down the paper. And sometimes when I want to go quick, I just don't want to tear the paper. So this is a good trick to have a shabby chic style without, without tearing all the papers. This fold, I'm going to place it down because it's going to give some character. All right, so I have this. 
see what it looks like. I'll try to zoom out a little bit. Okay, it seems like it's too big. So we have all those scrappy papers. There's not, they're not scrap at all. We, I scrap them. <laughs> anyway, what you can do is I want to add two special paper on top. So you can start with maybe just one staple here to hold those together so you don't lose them and don't have to redo them all the time. Now I want to add um, tracing paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at which size I want. So maybe I'll go like this. You can tear it down, but when everything is lined, is straight on the sides, I tend to cut as well. So it matches the others. I kind of don't like when there's a side that is clean cut and the other one is teared on the same paper. So I have two straight lines on the sides, which matches kind of, but I don't mind having tearing here at, at the bottom of the paper. So that's what I'll do. And it's gonna give me a little bit more of the shabby chic style. And because I teared it, and I don't want to see the white. I'm gonna ink a little bit. And I find that the ink on the tracing paper makes works really well to age the paper. Like it's kind of almost perfect. So, and the side that I've cut, this one was the original side. So it was already stained naturally. So I stained the two sides. Now it's going well. I can maybe pick my top and then I'm gonna decide uh, what I want to do. So let's let's go with purple and green. Oh, I'm gonna pick this one. It has more designs and this will be the back. So if I go like that, okay, I could add a little, a tiny piece of a real scrap paper either that has like a kind of a design or I can go with real design paper or a coffee stain paper that I had I'm gonna use that one actually that's a good idea what about let, let me just see if I tear it if it's gonna be too awful So maybe like that, and just to make it uh, the same, I'm gonna tear the side with my ruler. So for this one, I'm gonna go just a tiny bit like that. Oh, well. I've been pretty straight. Good. So let's see how this can look like. So if I place that somewhere like that, and then I'm going to tear down here. Or this way. I think I prefer this way. So I'm going to tear about here. Let's see how it looks. Maybe it should be a little bit, it's either it needs to be longer, let's say, let's say like this. So this one is shorter and this one is longer or this one is longer and this one is really smaller. So I don't like the way it cut here. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna figure it out my size and I'll just cut the excess. I don't really mind if I cut straight or not because it's gonna be under the little top here. So now I can place my papers. Oh, oh, I want to ink my sides. I'm gonna ink. 
so really I surprised myself, but I'm not done with doing simples. <laughs> I just love it. I just can't stop. And honestly, when we do journals, we're always running out of ideas of little things that we can put between pages and pockets and that goes with the journal. So this is kind of perfect because you can do this one using those big tabs, those big tops, but you can do the same with Let's say this one, the apothecary one. This would be like a small scrappy pad. And I've used many pages, but you could you could do a slim one with just three, four papers in, right? So now I'm gonna staple everything else, the two sides. So everything is holding by, by at least two staples and at the back it shows like that but we don't mind we won't see the back anyway so these top I've already inked all the sides and the middle a little bit so the brownish that you see is mostly ink as you can see I've inked them so how do I glue that is I'm gonna put some glue almost at the top on the sides almost like that. I'm leaving a little bit of I'm leaving a little bit of uh, a space here and there because I don't want it to look like it's been glued really really stick to the paper everywhere. So I'm gluing the back here first. And you want to allow a space here at the top. And don't forget, it's a little bit bulky, so you need to allow a space for your fold. And then you're gonna be able to fold like that. So I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna put some glue. Here we go. It's cute like that, but... We want to add a little bit of dimension, right? So first, to add some dimension, I can go with, oh, there you go. Any little scrap pieces of tulle, cheesecloth, lace, that should work. So let me pile on three different Ten items not a bulky one I mean if you use a lace that is a little bit that is not really thin maybe you should just put two okay this is this was too much like a triangle okay like this and maybe a little scrap of this lace and then I'm gonna do a sari silk or chiffon silk here so I don't know I'm in the green and purple but I have this here this is great This is great, mixed with this white one. Let's go with that. Okay, I'm doing a mess. So I'm gonna do a little bow here with some white and green. I want it to be really small. What about something like that? Oh boy, that's cute. Okay, so for this one, I'm using either 
my art glue or the art glitter glue but when it's too thin i tend to prefer using the the art glue create some folds to add some dimension and then another tiny bit of glue to glue my bow and apply some pressure to make it as thin as possible and here you go look at that isn't it easy and you still have place here to write down something those pads are a good size and yeah we can write down almost everywhere and at some point we can open it more So that's an idea that I add to do scrappy pads. Another idea that I got was creating a little booklet like that and I stapled just at one spot so I don't have to fight with my papers. Now if I place that, I thought I could maybe add a little bit of lace just like that and use a thread, a contrasting thread, but still in the blue, to kind of attach it the old way. So it's going to be total fake, but a look from the old times. So I'm going to glue this first. And now what I want to do, maybe I'm going to glue, I'm going to glue the back. the back like that and now I'm gonna stitch do a stitching so in order to do that I'm gonna take my pad here okay so I'm taking my pad and a little uh, needle punch that I have in the days I was doing scrapbooking and I'm gonna do like something here and I'm not measuring something like that I can add more actually I'm gonna do two times little ones to look really like the old times where they couldn't do any stapling and they were doing it by hand I totally forgot to turn on my camera so I did one and I'll show you how to do the other one. So you grab your papers and you go through from the top, you leave that aside and maybe hold it with your fingers like that to have a good tension. You come back and then because I'm using a small like a regular sewing machine thread, I'm gonna go through those holes for three times, just so I have what it looks like a big yarn. But if you have like bigger threads or yarns, you could just maybe pass once. So we needed that here to do the little knot, so I can cut. Now I can do two little knots hold it at the good place when I do my knots I tend to reverse them so it doesn't move here you go and I just trim Here you go look at that looks like really in the old time when they didn't have any stapling so this one is really simple because that lace design and with the treads and just a tiny bit of lace makes it all for the last project 
I grabbed some papers together and I'm ready to, to kind of um, staple them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of my blank ones and I'm going to add papers on top to decorate them instead of using those that are already good to go. All right, so I have my scrappy pad and what I want to do is I'm going to use portions of those designs because I really love, you know, the laces here and the green and everything. So this one is a bit too big and this one is a big too small. I'm going to use this one still. Let me cut that so you can see. Because I'm going to use music papers and other kind. Okay, so... I'll do it with the rulers so it doesn't seem to be too perfect like it would be with scissors. And now I'm going to tear the rest like that. Let me just decide how big I want it. Maybe something like that. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm going to ink that first and then I'm going to show you how I layer this. So, inking. And this ink makes it look so perfect. Look at that. Oh boy, I love that. Okay, music sheets. I want some music sheets. Okay, so I want some music sheets. I keep my stash in a bag. You know what? Just looking at that makes me happy. So I'll just grab one and I'll do the folds however they come. Let me just, I just want to make sure it's the good length. Oh, that's kind of perfect, perfect right away. So this, I would glue that gluing it like that and then I can add this there like this. So I'm going to glue this now. Sometimes I just reverse it and just tap like that. There you go. Now I just need a little bow. I'm going to show you the previous one that I did. I just added a little um, lace there, cheesecloth, and just a little knot on a chiffon silk. And it's a greenish that kind of match the design paper. This time I look on my table and I find this piece of lace. It's a little bit too big so I'm gonna cut it down. And I'm gonna place and I'm gonna do this is a bow that I did yesterday for another project and I didn't use it so I'll just use it this time so 
I'm going to use my hot glue. And my spatula, and I'm going to try to create some folds at the same time within my lace just to give it some dimension. So I'm just moving around. I kind of grab my bow at the same time. All right, and I'm gonna cut the excess. And these leftovers, they're good for another project. Don't throw them away. So here you go. This one is a little bit more white. It still has the little green. It's more tone on tone. It matches everything. You work in blue, you work in yellow, you work in purple, you work in green. It matches everything. So that's that's how it works and that's why i did those neutral neutral ones like this so you don't feel guilty <laughs> on gluing more layers on top of it you're not hiding anything so i hope you enjoyed watching this video it's a long one but i i had so much fun playing with that and um I wish you a lot of fun with that kit. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.